I am a professional bass player here in New York City, and I've gravitated toward the dirty sounds of tape, but more importantly, the limitations of creating music on a four track cassette Porta studio. If you're new to tape machines, it can be very overwhelming and I understand. So I'm gonna present this video as if I have a time machine. Pretend I'm going back in time to my old self. These are some pieces of advice that I would give to that younger person. And where else should we start other than types of tape machines. For starting off, I would truly recommend, from the bottom of my heart, something inexpensive and easy to use. I'm talking things like this, a cassette quarter, or things like this, a dictaphone, micro cassette dictaphone. The nice thing, price tag. This was $10 at a thrift shop. This maybe was 20 bucks on eBay. The thing that these both have in common that I love is that they have that quote unquote terrible sound. They do things that plugins just can't do. I just quickly recorded this little piano thing to show you. Here is the camera audio. Now check out what that piano part sounds like being played back from this vibey machine. Sometimes these tape machines are cool just for their speaker. So really, really lo-fi sounds if you use the built-in speaker. <laughs> what a vibe. The wobbliness, the uncertainty, piano sounds in general, keyboard sounds, do take really well to these sorts of machines. Yeah, and these things are portable, which is sick. You can get crappy sounds anywhere. <laughs> I recorded that same piano part on this little Panasonic dictaphone. Panasonic RN302. The cool thing about this model in particular and many other models is it's got two speeds. Let's hear that same piano part slowed down. Yes, I just showed you $30 of tape machines. I would say the next level up are kind of nicer mono tape machines. Like this Sony TCM 5000 EV. This is a mono cassette recorder. I got this for 50 bucks on eBay, if I recall correctly, 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 correctly. Some people don't know what they have. We're gonna talk about where to find tape machines here pretty soon. Another type of mono machine is that Ur 4000 report monitor. This is a very cool German mono tape machine. It was used heavily by the BBC. These were starting to get a little bit more expensive. I got this new old stock, 400 bucks maybe. So when it comes to this next level up, there are three head tape machines. That's something that I would look out for if I was a beginner looking at this level. Three head tape machines allow you to be more experimental and specifically to do things like tape echo. And tape echo is one of the most glorious effects ever. The next level up are multi-track tape recorders. And in my case, this whole channel's been built upon the Tascam Porta 2. And this TAC A2340, which is technically a four-track reel-to-reel -reel machine. Multi-track set recorders, Porta Studios, they're very cool. One of the number one questions I get about this machine, it's a four-track. Why are there six channels? Every tape machine that has a mixer attached to it as just that, something you're recording on and then a mixer. All that these extra channels are, are more mixing ability. You can multi-mic a source, you can do effects loops, you can do different things that you couldn't if you just had a mixer of four. Like everything else with tape, tape speed is a fun thing to mess with. literally a part of a theme song for a comedy podcast. That's why there's funny sounds in it. But if you're looking to get really creative and explore the limitations that are set upon you by this and record 
entire pieces of music, I can't recommend it enough. It gets me off of the computer, which for me helps me be more creative. They're so cool. You gotta commit to the mistakes if there are any or re-record. Those are some types of tape machines. Well, where do we find a tape machine? I have two questions for you. How bold are you? And do you have any older relatives? If you're really bold, ask around your neighborhood. Check out yard sales, check out garage sales. Do you have any older relatives? A lot of folks from the older generations have things like this lying around and really don't think anything of it especially if they're not musical creators. So definitely start with people you know, ask around. Even just for the media itself, tapes. I've gotten tapes before, not this one, this is a really nice one, but I've gotten tapes from relatives and friends. Once you've exhausted your local supplies, you just grab your computer, and we will use the power of the internet. eBay.com, tape machine. You could get really broad, but as you, oh, look at that, it doesn't, you shouldn't type in tape machine, I made a mistake. Cassette, dick, dick, uh, phone. Try this. There's one for 18 bucks, 10 bucks, right here. 10 bucks, 10 bucks. And held. We're getting better here. 25 bucks, some of these are old. All right, enough dictaphones. Let's look at Porta Studios. On eBay, this pro refurb, refurb person, I've never purchased anything from them, but they seem to know what they're doing. I'm gonna talk about prices on eBay here and prices of Porta Studios. There are those among us who would see this $430 Tascam Porta Studio 414 Mark II, let's click on it, and they would shit their pants. They were giving them away. In the late 90s, especially in the early 2000s, cassette Porta Studios were just seemed so unusefully old. You know, everything has trends. They could get them for nothing or 50 bucks, but, I have the original receipt, because my dad was the original owner of this Tascam Porta 2. And when he bought it new in 1987, it was like $700. Look at this. This machine, brand new, is like a $1,900 machine. Uh, let me find a Tascam Porta 2 specifically. Oh, there you go, look at this. Restored. $700. <laughs> I mean, I'm... It's not a small amount of money, but I'm just telling you, look at that $700. I just pulled that out of thin air. You can definitely find them cheaper than that, but compared to a new one back in the day, it is less than half. I know that's not cheap, but it's doable. Shopgoodwill.com is very similar to eBay. It, everyone knows about it, it's no secret. One place I tell people about that I think often gets forgotten because young people don't use it very much is Facebook Marketplace. Look at this, a Tascam M320 mixer for, for 400 bucks. Look at someone selling a Fostex, old Fostex for 60 bucks in Poughkeepsie. Oh man, I shouldn't be showing you guys this. Facebook Marketplace can be a dangerous spot. <laughs> Look at this, a 244 for 100 bucks. With these, you're gonna run into possibly more mechanical issues. But man, look at we're scrolling through here. I'm seeing some good stuff. Getting off the computer. Once you've found a tape machine, there are certain accessories that are indispensable for operating in a modern studio or bedroom studio setup. I'm calling this section accessories once you've found a machine. Cables. Cables! I'm not gonna assume anything about your knowledge. Cables, right off the bat, instrument cables. Engineers would call this a TS, tip, tip sleeve. A type of cable that most young people do not have are RCA cables. RCA cables are just line level cables, but almost every machine I've ever seen, that's the line out, which is your direct way to plug into your audio interface. And in order to plug into your audio interface, I need RCA to quarter inch adapters. These are very important to me. This is how I can plug into the interface and that's how you get the cassette music onto your computer. If you're like me and you mix with all kinds of outboard gear, I use little patch cables for pedals, three foot patch cables. You'll find you need all of them, all arrangements. Another weird cable, insert cable. This is one cable. This is one end, a TRS, 
and this is two ends, TS, TS. Most people see this and think that it's a Y cable, that it, it, it goes from stereo to two mono. That is not what this is. This is wired in a loop, and all Porta Studios and most old school mixers even have what are called insert points. Funny enough, everyone knows on a DAW insert, that's where you put your plugins. This is the physical reason why that term exists. Insert cables into an insert point. For instance, I have now inserted into channel one and I said it was a loop. Right here, it says ring return. And on this side, it says tip send. The send part goes to whatever, anything. Uh, an effects chain. The signal is sending out and then the return, it's coming back. And then it stays inside of channel one. So now you've slapped that effect onto that channel. That's different from an effects send. And if you're not uh, into soldering cables, you can get these. Other things that you need, adapters. This impedance transformer, Whirlwind. This is how you can plug microphones into your Porta Studio. But more importantly for me, it's also how you plug a microphone into guitar pedals. I cannot stress how important these are. That German tape machine, it uses something called DIN connections. I have a converter to change it to quarter inch so I can patch it in. That adapter, the impedance transformer, the insert cable, those are all things that I get at Sweetwater.com. I conveniently put links to all those things in the description box below. The cool thing about when you click on those links is that you're supporting this channel. So I really do appreciate it. Obviously my channel has a lot of gear, but I'm a very creativity forward person. And that's what I wanna get across. And if you write great songs and just want it to sound weird, it doesn't cost you much. Art is not worth going in debt for. As always, peace, be good to each other.